uh, Rainwater Solutions. We're out of Raleigh, North Carolina, and uh, we do uh, rainwater collection systems, both commercial and residential. Um, and what we're going to talk about today is um, collecting rainwater. Um, it's, it's an age-old practice, and uh, a lot of people say, well, what's the big deal? We've got plenty of water. It's, it's just water. Why even bother collecting it? If you look at the Earth's surface, 80% is covered by water. Um, from space, it looks like we have plenty of water. Um, out of that, there we go, 97% of that's in ocean, salty. Uh, in the Gulf, you have oil. So uh, right now, that's, that's not uh, usual. 2% is frozen at this point in time, so that's, that's not uh, um, available to us. So at least 1%, I've heard even less than 1%, I've heard as little as a third to a half of 1% is actually available for consumption. And that's what we really need to focus on, is conserving um, that 1%. Um, and and uh, as far as like saving rainwater, uh, North Carolina is a great place to collect water. We get consistent amounts of rain through, throughout the year. And rainwater is free. Um, I was just telling Graham there with Southern Energy, it's like we haven't had rain in a couple of weeks, my tank's dry, I cannot wait until Tuesday to watch my tank fill back up. Um, the, uh, there are costs associated with systems, whether it's a rain barrel or a large system, but the water itself is free. Uh, it's a renewable, sustainable um, resource. And, and again, if, if we only have 1% available to us, we need to protect that as best as we can. Um, and like I said, the uh, North Carolina does get consistent rains. Um, another thing, too, as far as using it for irrigation, um, it's, there's no ammonia fluoride or chlorine, which is a great source for, uh, for your plants. The, you, can, you can irrigate with city water, but again, the ammonia, the fluoride, the chlorine, plants don't need it. Plants respond a lot better to rainwater. Um, it also depend, it lessens your dependence on a municipal source or a well source. Uh, during the drought of 07, we were getting a lot of calls from people who were on community wells where maybe water pressure was dropping or the water was, was getting muddy or getting mud yet that their neighbor had their irrigation system on. And again, it's, it's, a, it's a, just because you have a well does not guarantee you a, a source of water. Might be bad at the time if you don't want to control. Um, and, and again, it provides an alternate source of potable water. Our focus here in North Carolina is on the non-potable use for water. Um, it is very simple to set up a system to get potable water from rainwater. Because if you think about it, the water's never even hit the ground, so it's not been uh, exposed to uh, uh, petroleum products, chemicals, uh, fertilizers, pet waste, or anything like that. But again, North Carolina, because of the current zoning and the way that the, the code is written, it's very difficult to, to have a potable water system. So we focus on the non potable. Let's save the potable water for consumption and use non potable for irrigation, toilet flushing, uh, vehicle washing. Um, another big issue here there, there's two sides of, of uh, using uh, uh, collecting rainwater, and that is for conservation and then also for controlling stormwater. Um, any building that, that you're going to build, you have to control a certain amount of the stormwater leaving the site. So again, we can take stormwater that is a, a liability and clean it, save it, and then all of a sudden we have an asset to use for uh, um, irrigation or again, non potable sources. Um, here are the rainfall uh, averages for, uh, for, for, North, for North Carolina. Here's Raleigh. We get about 42 inches of rain a year. And if you, if you look, you know, through January, February, all the way through, we get a consistent amount of, of rain throughout the year. Anywhere from almost three inches there to, uh, to four, four inches in July. And we have a good thunderstorms roll through, maybe a hurricane or two. Keeps that, uh, keeps that average up. And when you start looking at size and systems, that's very key. Because if you are in a very dry area where you maybe have a rainy season, you have to collect and store water for longer periods of time to get you through those dry spells. North Carolina is nice because we get the consistent amount of rainfalls. So, like when the tank uh, gets gets close to being dry, it's it's uh, it's not long before we get a, a rainstorm come through here to, to fill up those uh, fill up the tanks. And the way the math works.
works is um, you're using your roof area to collect rainwater. Okay, in this example, we're going to have a 35 by 75 foot home, so we've got about 2,600 uh, square feet of roof area. And for each inch of rain that hits that, we're, we're, that roof is shedding 1,640 gallons of water. So that's just for one inch of rain. And then you look at the averages, we're getting between um, three and four inches of rain a month. We usually just average it out at three. So this home in this example is shedding almost 5,000 gallons of water a month. This is water that right now is just sent down the driveway, sent down the curb. Um, and, and sent away, where, you know, again, this is a liability, we have the stormwater, so why not collect it, save it, and use it, turn it into an asset? Um, at at 5,000 gallons a month, you know, again, 59,000 gallons of water a year on this one single house. So you can look at any neighborhood, how many homes there are, um, look at uh, commercial sites, uh, big warehouses, and again, you look at the square footage, uh, how much roof area they have, and it's very easy to do the math. Um, systems are anything from a rain barrel all the way up to, to uh, uh, thousands and thousands of gallons. Um, rain barrels, we start with that because it's a, it's a simple tool. It's a great um, way to show people how easy it is to collect and use rainwater.